Hello and welcome to this Illustrator video tutorial. Today we're looking at using the Gradient tool. Now before I start the video, I want to show you some courses that I have at Udemy and in the description below are special coupon links for you for all of those courses. My coupon prices are always at least as good as anything that Udemy can offer and often they're even better. I also have classes at Skillshare and again a coupon in the description below will give you an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and generally better. If you sign up for Skillshare you'll get access to thousands of classes there including over 200 of mine. So let's swing back to Illustrator and I'm going to create a brand new document. Doesn't matter how big your document is, I'm going to create a rectangle and we'll apply a gradient to this. To apply a gradient, click on the Fill option and then click here to add a gradient. And the gradient that's going to be applied is the default gradient and that's a white to black gradient. Now if you want to find additional gradients in Illustrator, go to the Swatches panel. If you can't see your Swatches panel in a list down the right of the screen, go to Window and then Swatches and you can get access to it. Down here in the bottom of the Swatches panel is a Swatch Libraries menu. Click it to open it and go to Gradients where you can access a whole series of gradients. Now I'm going to choose Fruits and Vegetables. And this gives me access to a whole series of gradients that have been pre-created and shipped with Illustrator. And I'm just going to grab one of these and we'll work with it. When you apply a gradient to a shape, there are two actual tools that you can use apart from this one that actually adds the gradient to the shape. Over here is a gradient panel and you get to that by choosing window and then gradient. And this sets out what the gradient actually looks like. And then over here in the toolbar is a gradient tool and it sets out a little bit about what the gradient looks like but it also gives you additional functionality for adjusting that gradient. So let's first of all concentrate on this gradient panel. I'm just going to deselect the gradient tool for now. These are color stops along the bottom here. So these are different colors in the gradient. So let's go to this dark red one here, which is controlling this color. If I double click on it, I get access to the tools I need to change that color. I can use the color options or I could use swatches. If I use the color options, I get access to RGB, grayscale, HSB, which is hue, saturation, brightness, CMYK values, and web safe. I'm going to choose HSB because I find that quite handy because it allows me to adjust the saturation and brightness of a color stop. And I can also select a different color. So I'm going to try and find a sort of brighter yellow here. And as I find that brighter yellow, you'll see that it's actually being applied to the image and it's being applied to this particular gradient stop. If you don't want a color, you can just drag it off the gradient and it's deleted. Now let's look at these across the top. These little markers are what are called midpoints and they set the midpoint between this color and this color in the gradient. And typically they'll be in the very middle because they're midpoints, but you can drag them from one side to the other. And when you do, you move the midpoint of the color that is in the middle of this color and this color, and you apply it up here. So you're adding sort of harder edges to your gradient. If you want softer edges, you'll just drag them back to the midpoint and then you can see things are much softer. And we can soften this edge of the gradient by moving this midpoint away. We can move it right up to here and create a really big stop. So you get a lot of control over what your gradient looks like from these stops. Color along the bottom and the midpoints along the top. And if you want to add another color, you can select, for example, a color stop and then just click here when you've got this little plus symbol and that'll add another color stop at that point. And of course, we can go and apply a different color at that point. Here are our midpoints get a sharp color or a more subtle color by dragging the midpoints into position. So in addition to this gradient panel, which exists in the panel area, we also have the gradient tool and it's over here. This can be a little bit confusing, but you've got two tools, so it pays to know how to use both of them. This one is controlling the linear gradient. And here we've got our midpoints and our color stops. So we've got the same tools as we had in the gradient panel and they're accessible here. 
So we can adjust the colors and we can also adjust the midpoints between the colors here. But we've also got some extra options over here at the very end is a little circle and on the other end is a little square. Well, the circle is the point of origin of the gradient. So that's a rotation point, if you like. And the square is the actual rotating arm. So when I hold my mouse pointer just over the edge of the square, you can see the little rotation option. So I can rotate this linear gradient around to change its direction. I can also drag inwards or outwards here. So I could bring the gradient further into the image, for example. So the circle is the point around which you're rotating and the square is the make it longer or shorter or rotate it. Just be careful because there's a color stop that's going to be right on top of that. And it is very easy to select the wrong option and think that perhaps things aren't working. Now, in addition to a linear gradient, you can also create a radial gradient. So let's go back to the gradient panel, which I appear to have lost. So I'll go to window and then gradient. I'm going to select here on the radial gradient. Now a radial gradient allows you to create a circular gradient. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see this gradient more clearly. So we've still got the same arm, but this time the little circle's right in the middle because it's the rotation point. And this is the point that we can use to rotate it around. Although rotating's not going to do much to a radial gradient because it's just going to look the same wherever you happen to move it to. We've got our color stops, but we've also got these little icons here. And this one allows you to make your radial gradient more like an oval. Now when it's an oval rotating, it makes more sense. You also have an option here for sizing the gradient so you can make it larger or smaller using this option here. And of course we can always drag out on it here then that's going to have the same effect. So up until Illustrator CC 2018 and including CC 2018, they were your options for having a gradient. But in Illustrator CC 19, a new gradient was introduced. So let's go and have a quick look at that. This new gradient is what is called a freeform gradient. And so it's going to behave very, very differently. Now this is the default freeform gradient. So we've got a whole series of color stops here. In this case, they're just going to be placed on the image. They're not actually in a line and they're not in a circle. They're just wherever they happen to be. Now you can move these around, double click on them to choose a different color. So I'm going to choose a different color because it's going to be a lot easier to see what's going on. Here is another gradient stop and it's controlling this sort of green color. Double click on it and I can change its color, for example, to yellow. It also has this little dotted circle around it and you can drag on the bottom part of the dotted circle to make it larger or smaller. And as you do, that impacts where the gradient intersects with another color stop elsewhere in the image. You can add additional color points by simply selecting stops and just click to add another color point. Double click it and choose a color to use. Now we've got uh, regular swatches. We've also got the color option here. So you could also select a color this way. And again, resize this to change how it impacts its relationship with the other color stops. If you want to delete a color stop, just select it and click here on delete and it will disappear. Now there's also an option for lines and these are going to be different again. When you create a line gradient, you're going to click once to start the gradient and double click if you want to change the color point. So I'm going to choose a sort of red color point here. And then I'll come back into the document and create my next color stop. But you can see that there's a sort of elastic band here. So here is the next color stop and we're going to sweep around with a curve. This new gradient feature is linked to the new curvature tool and that's how it's working. So if you're familiar with the curvature tool, you'll be somewhat familiar with what's happening here with your gradients. So you can see my rubber band coming with me. I'll double click to add a different color in at this point and continue on to complete the remainder of my line gradient. I'll double click at this point and add a different color again. 
If I'm ready to finish my line at this point, I can just press Escape. These color stops can, of course, be selected and adjusted. They're just going to form a nice curve. And if you want to add another curve point, then just click on the line and you'll get another curve point. Obviously, add a color to it and then you can move it around like the other anchor points here on this line gradient. But as I said, this is only available in Illustrator CC 2019 and later. But the linear gradient and the radial gradient have been around for many, many years. I hope this helps you understand the basics of working with gradients in Illustrator. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Please feel free to share the video and to comment on it. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.